Hello everybody and welcome to what will hopefully be the first in a long series of videos looking at the explorable modes of the dungeons that are available in Guild Wars 2 um, and hopefully we'll continue to cover these as we go forward and complete more for ourselves. Uh, so far we've only done the catacombs but I feel like we're pretty good at this. I've got Mike here by the way. Say hi Mike. Hello, hello, this is Mike. Yeah, so we spent a fair amount of time, I'd say, before 80, I add, before we had all of our traits and our armor and stuff, um, in this dungeon, uh, really grinding our way through it and figuring the mechanics of it out, uh, which was an awful lot of fun, and I think we've both probably got quite a bit to share about the various aspects of the explorable mode of this dungeon. Uh, as you are probably aware, explorable modes um, all have multiple paths you can go through. So when you come into this dungeon for the first time, once you've completed story, and you decide you want to try explorable mode, you'll actually find uh, you can only do one path at a time. But we do have coverage of all of the different paths, um, and they'll be coming out in separate videos. No matter what path you choose, though, uh, you're always going to be going to the same central hub area, which is what you're going to be seeing on this video. You're going to be seeing a particularly two. You're going to be seeing some trash mobs. You're going to be seeing two main bosses though before um, all of the paths really take effect. Uh, and I have a very strong feeling, which I think you'll probably agree with me here, Mike, that a lot of people probably get defeated in the Ascon Catacombs or on the second boss that we're going to be looking at on this video, and they kind of don't go much further than that because he is quite hard if you don't figure him out, isn't? I find that fairly likely, yeah. But I, I call this this breeder and this small room the noob check. In <laughs> case your team can't take that out, then you know you should probably give up there and uh, reform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing I think that probably comes down to, this is just an idea though, um, stopping people being able to just solo their way in, that's the first boss you get before you even really get a waypoint or anything like that. I don't think there is one at the door. Um, so it literally is, if you can't kill this guy, you're going to turn around. So... Um, I, it's been interesting to me how few players you can complete this with, but I would seriously recommend you go in with five people, which the dungeons are designed to be for. Um, and you'll probably be in it for a while. How long do you think this dungeon really takes in total? Oh, uh, well, we did this at level 50. We're all about 50. I'm 47 in this one. And I don't know, how long did it take us? Maybe about two hours? But we were figuring stuff out at the time. Yeah, so the first... Maybe once you get it down, it'll take probably about an hour. I, I guess about an hour. Yeah, the the first runs we did took a much longer time because we we had to figure certain things out, which is very good. I, I would say straight away, um, a lot of people have been talking about Endgame. I'm still reserving my judgment for Endgame until I've seen all of the explorable paths. But when I did this at level 50, it felt sufficiently difficult enough, um, but also rewarding enough that when you figure stuff out that I've actually really enjoyed this dungeon. Um, the first few times it took a very long time to get through um, but after that it, when you start to nail down the mechanics it can go a lot quicker. Obviously we fi I finished this about four times now seeing all the different paths which is cool. Anyway so here at the start you will get a choice after the cutscenes um, to speak to this chart and choose which route you're going down. They, I think you just saw us pick the Ghost Eater. Um, That's correct. Yeah, so we, we picked the Ghost Eater here, but uh, you're always going to be coming through this corridor here. For example, these Gravelings will always spawn no matter what path you choose for. So what exactly is going on here, Mike? Right here, this burrow just spawns at the bottom of these stairs. Pretty much as soon as you go past the, the two Priory guys at the top of the stairs, and it will spawn Gravelings constantly until you destroy it. Obviously, it's a structure, so it's immune to conditions, so... If your entire team is focused on conditions, you're going to have a hell of a hard time doing this, and I'd suggest respecking. Yeah. But if you just rush down the stairs, make sure your team's awake and with you, so that when you go down here, you can all destroy it pretty fast, get rid of the gravelings, and get into this trap room. On the topic of respecking as well, one thing that some people might not be aware of, if you are very new to explorable uh, mode dungeons, you can leave. You can have someone in your party leave, go all the way back to a retrainer, get your new set of traits, your new weapons, whatever you want, and then return to the dungeon and complete it once again. There have been a few bugs with fixing these kind, of, with getting people back up and grouped, uh, but that's not intentional. It is the idea, it is possible once you, um, once the bugs are ironed out, I suppose, to be able to go out and respec and stuff, and ArenaNet are allowing us to do that. So don't be scared to, if you really feel like you're up against a brick wall. Uh, in terms Besides, of that's right at the start of the dungeon, so even if you do have to like redo the instance, you, I mean, you're going to miss like what four minutes right now yeah yeah but we're going to be seeing a lot of burrows aren't we i mean this is going to be uh, a recurring thing of the category there's a lot of scenery to destroy like right here we're destroying gargoyle heads these things will spit fire into this room if you move too far into this room a lot of spiderlings will spawn and cause you trouble yeah there's a lot of poison and things so bring some condition removal or just something to mitigate all that poison 
Yeah, that position on the gate's quite a nice one. I'm not s necessarily saying it's the most optimum place, but you can hit the gargoyle heads from on top of that without any problems at all, without any risk of spawning the spiders. We saw we did spawn the spiders here, but if you look at where the position of Asia is right now, that's about how far in the room you can go before they spawn. So when you guys that's come That's on through, Necro on the left, by the way, guys. Yeah, so when you... Um, uh, when you do this for yourself, you can take out the gargoyle heads without these spiders. It's not super important to kill the gargoyle heads, I'd say. If you just don't go into the back area of that room, you should be alright, I, I tend to find. If you hang to around where we are, the gargoyle heads, at least the ones at the back, won't hit you. Uh, but we're going to be fighting a boss in here in a second, and she can come sometimes go to the back. So it's a little bit unavoidable. unavoidable so. The, the statue also over there in the middle of the room on the stairs, you can use that as a line of sight tool to avoid some damage as well. Right, yeah. Um, she should spawn in a second. Uh, this is really, you called the, the breed of the noob check. Uh, this is the semi-competent player check, I suppose. Uh, this <laughs> this is how, how well can you work as a team check? Yeah, so this is your first real encounter. You'll find... She's not particularly interesting in terms of mechanics, this boss, but you will find this to be a challenge, definitely to rival the bosses you were finding in the story mode. Uh, I'd say she's probably harder than Kasha Blackblood, for example, in the story mode of this dungeon. I'd say she's harder than her. Um, maybe not the lovers. Maybe. I don't really remember. It was quite a long time that we did that for the first time in story mode. But yeah, so as you can see there, I just cut it forward. Main tips for this uh, fight, what does she do, Mike? Uh, she sticks a load of poison things on the ground. She'll do those huge sort of AOE things, mostly in front of her. So if you get all your, all you guys that need to do the damage in the back behind her, you see the poison on the on the ground there. Just get out of there because the the longer you stay in there, the more it'll stack. The longer you'll have to deal with it. Poison. You can remove that fairly easily. That's poison, so it'll remove your healing abilities. Yeah. Or just make them less effective. But if you stand behind her, she won't poison you as often, and you'll have a much easier time of it. Yeah, she can immobilize with attacks if she chooses to target you, um, which obviously synergizes with her big AoEs. Uh, again, though, try and stay away from the gargoyle heads. You saw me on fire earlier. That's because I went into that part of the room. You'll have an easier time if you stay away. Um, there was a big cut there with her health going down. Uh, you will find when your team gets a bit better, you can kill her a fair bit faster. Um, but she can take a while. If you're finding it's taking a very long time, I came into this dungeon once with a setup with like three guardians or just generally a very defensive setup and it took us a very long time. Um, but she will go down. Generally she does less damage but uh, she can beat you I suppose. She, she could if you're not careful in that room. But that's all really you have to consider. What's going on here then? Right here this corridor, there's a good choke point to actually use there. See the guardians have put their shields down and their lines down and things can't get past. That scavenger's managed to slip its way past and down one of our players. Mm -hmm. Try not to let that happen, but if it does then just get them back up, try and do your best there. And there is, is this a champion breeder? Uh, looks I don't know, it's like a howler. Yeah, a howler. Are these... I'm pretty sure there's a, a breeder in that group. Try and take out the breeder first because the breeders spawn more enemies for you and you just want to try there and is. limit that. There is, so you can see a ping on the top left of the screen right now. Uh, highly advisable. So this is our first encounter with um, a group of mixed uh, Gravelings. Gravelings you're going to be finding in pretty much all, or you are going to be finding in all of the explorable um, uh, paths for this dungeon. So get used to them. Uh, what's the priority, I, do you think, Mike? For priority for me is get rid of those breeders because they will spawn more enemies for you to deal with, and that's just going to... Even if they're not that hard to deal with, they're still going to cause panic, and it'll it'll make it harder. Okay, uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll talk after, more after that. We'll talk after that, more you want to go for howlers and scavengers and things. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go back to them soon because they're all over the dungeon. What you what happens here? You've got this trap corridor. There's got loads of spikes that will come up. There is a chain on the left. What I did there, you saw me fail it the first Just time. Just behind the door there. Yeah, there's just some chains. You saw me fail it the first time, but what is handy to do if you're an Ellie, if you're anyone that's got some mobility, you can zip your way up that corridor as I showed there. Um, you can fail it as I, as I showed, but when you do get up there, you can disable the traps, most of them, but there are still some that are in the corridor, so be careful of those, especially if you're you white. Can, you can dodge through them, and once the red circles have disappeared, you can safely walk over that section of the floor as well. Yeah. So um, that that corridor can be annoying, uh, considering here's the second boss. This is the more difficult boss. This is what I was talking about earlier. In the, it's probably going to kick out a lot of the teams that come and encounter him. When actually he's reasonably simple to to fight. Uh, so when you first find him, he's flanked with two ghosts that can actually have it could any. Be mesmers, they could be Ellies, they could be Rangers, Warriors, Necros, anything. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, so in this run here, you can see there are two Mesmers. Um, if you've got an Ellie and a Mesmer there, definitely I'd say go for the Ellie. That happened to us. Um, Rangers can be kind of annoying. You should be familiar with these ghosts, though, if you have completed story mode of the Catacombs. Um, so, But this is one of those rare encounters with them. You don't actually fight many ghosts in the explorable mode. As I say, it's more Gravelings. Um, I would say this boss that we're now fighting, the Lieutenant, he hits like a truck and he might wipe you but if he does just focus on these two ghosts if you can at least kill the ghosts and your team wipes when you first fight, fight him it doesn't matter take that as a win because you've got rid of the two ads and now next time when you encounter him you can focus on on dealing with him himself so at least get one kill i would say if you're if you can't get a single kill without wiping uh you're gonna have a very tough time um but that's that should be your main focus first time you engage this boss getting down these other two ghosts uh, so Either that or just make sure you've got a, a reasonable plan of which ghost to focus and then just like get gather your team back together instead of rushing in one at a time and, and really, you know, make sure you're all prepared for it the next time you go in. Yeah, so as you can see, that's what happened to us on this particular run. Uh, we killed the two ads, but then we had to kind of take a step back and re-engage him, which you're seeing here. Um, so a lot of people will die. They'll, they'll suffer horrible, horrible deaths here. And why is that, Mike? You'll see him do this thing that I like to call dusting. I should explain what dusting is to me. When he sort of builds up power, when any enemy builds up power, you see a bunch of dust sort of going into them, like right there. Yeah. And in that point, you want to dodge. Don't question it, just dodge, because what he will do is pull you in if he manages to hit you and down you instantly. Yeah. So You can avoid that if you've got stun breakers and you're really, really fast, but if you've got a dodge, you might as well just use that. Yeah, so ba there he is doing it right now, as you can see there. Um, this is his main attack. This is the thing that people need to figure out quite quickly during this fight. He can instantly kill everyone on your team if they aren't aware of this. Uh, when he dusts, as Mike says, he's going to zoom in and basically he'll fire out five darts. There'll be a dart, basically, or a projectile aimed at every single member of your, your, your team, right? And everyone, is if they get hit by it, they'll get dragged right in next to him and he'll do tons and tons of point blank AoE, probably killing people. You can get away. I've got missed form on my bar. If he does grab me in, I can. I'm lagging a lot in this run, um, but you can miss form and get away. Uh, but generally, it's very, very difficult to survive that. And if he hits everyone in the team, that's just going to be an instant wipe. Um, dodge it. Just there you go. You can see I failed to dodge it, but I managed to miss form out just there. Uh, if, that's the main thing. If you're in, I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but you can sometimes jump it, which is not recommended but i guess if you're out of dodges completely try jumping you yeah. can also use the pillars as a line of sight if you get behind those you can you can use those guardians can use their aegis to make you block it you've got a lot of tricks to, to avoid this sort of stuff yeah also while he's spinning if he's downed one of your your teammates don't try and res them while he's spinning because you can get hit by that spin yeah, exactly. So it's just a lot about awareness. I think this has been one of my most enjoyable fights uh, in the game so far, just because it's an, it's an incredible difference um, playing against him when you don't know how to dodge that. There you go. You can see that's an example of the damage right there if you do fail to dodge it. Uh, and that can happen to everyone on your team, but it really is a, a question of skill, and that's what I really like. That's what the end game's supposed to be about. It really is, once everyone in your team knows what they're doing, uh, all of a sudden he, he's far easier to deal with. What are his attacks outside? of the the big dusting main one that he's got uh you see him there just doing his leapy thing over on somebody over there in the corner he just it's a sort of ranger dagger poisony sort of heart seeker thing we he'll just leap towards you and poison you a bit yeah it, it can be annoying but it's not as it's definitely nowhere near as much damage as that that spin attack so um, I think it is important to point out, I went on one run with this where we didn't have any heavy armor people. We didn't have anyone that could actually take the brunt of his basic attacks. Everyone knew and could dodge the, the main big one where he sucks everyone in. But no one could really deal with his regular attacks. You will have seen earlier on the video that he does tons of damage to me as a light armor wearer. Absolutely tons of damage to me. And where we had a team composition where no one could really take at least some of those attacks, uh, we were getting totally owned by him because it didn't 
didn't matter if you could dodge anything else. He was he was killing us through that. So uh, my recommendations here would be have at least some people that can take a couple of those attacks so that they can uh, so that you as a team can survive. You do have time to get people up. And the other thing is his leap. Yes, it's a bit of a gap closer, but he does have to be reasonably close to if, attack you. In if the he's crippled and there's a bit of distance between you, he won't hit. He will not be able to connect with that thing. So if yeah. you've got slows, cripples, chills, all that sort of control stuff not hard CC because he's got defiant stacks if you can cripple him then take advantage of that and keep it range if you can yeah, which is, uh, if you watch like our Engage, you'll see that happen quite a lot. But basically, there you go. That's the intro to the explorable version of, of this. And now, depending on what path you choose, you'll go to a different area. We've got three videos showing those paths off, the incredibly difficult encounters that you'll find inside them. And then one final video showing the bosses, the various bosses of this dungeon at the end. Um, so hopefully this helped you if you've been having trouble, at least at the start of the catacombs. Um, gave you a bit of insight. We'll talk more about Gravelings next time. Uh, thanks for watching.